peaches. We're going to design this really fun, crazy pink chair. It looks like something that came out of Hawaii in like the 80s or the 90s and then got a whole new birthday party makeover. And we are going to give it another little makeover. So I wasn't planning to design this chair today, but I showed up and here it is. And it just gave me so much inspiration. So what we are going to do is we're going to create this beautiful spray on the side of this chair. You know, these big oversized chairs are something that we've seen for years in the wedding industry for the bride and groom. And I can't believe it, but I think these wicker chairs that were really big in the eighties and I think they're coming back. So, uh, Hang on to this, either it's coming back or I'm just having fun for the day. But either way, I'm gonna show you how it's done. So what I wanna do is I wanna start with an igloo. Uh, this actually, you see I do this a lot. Years ago, I bought these uh, bouquet holders and they were so cheap, so I bought a ton of them. And I snap off the, the handle of the bouquet holder and I use these for all kinds of projects. So this is one of them. I'm going to want to do the uh, really full display of flowers on one side, to give it a little asymmetry, but then I'm going to add flowers onto the entire section of this chair, the entire arch, excuse me, of this chair. So I'm going to start with a holder that's going to really give me some good hydration. And I'm going to put this right in the side. I've already put bind wire, so I didn't show you this. There's bind wire on either side. I've cut the bind wire. I have looped it around so it's nice and tight. And now I'm going to attach the bind wire. Here we go. I'm going to attach the bind wire right here. And this is going to hold it. I can attach it in multiple points to make sure it's nice and secure. Uh, if I only attach this in two points, it actually could very quickly give way. So the multiple points are really, really important. Now I've got these excess back here. I'm just going to loop around and I'm going to go in and once again, attach it there, loop around and give it another little twist. And same thing here and twist. So I get some really good security. This is going to be solid. Now it's a matter of starting to add our flowers to really give us this nice, big, robust spray. And this is one of the designs that I am most definitely going to need help on. So I will have Jordan joining me in a few minutes to really, really bust out this beautiful design. I'm going to grab a few of these delphinium. These are, these are so fun. These are the um, trick delphinium. They're these little micro delphinium. If you haven't seen them already, they're much shorter stems. They're really full. They're perfect for bouquet work. They're perfect for centerpieces. Really, it's a great, great delphinium variety. All right. I'm going to pull these blooms over so I have them. Ooh, do I like the lavender on this? Oh, I definitely do. Okay. Sometimes I will question my color choices, you know. After all, Jordan and I are the color queens. But sometimes we do look at colors and wonder, have we gone mad? Have we gone too far? <laughs> well, maybe we haven't gone far enough. All right, I'm going to add my greens. I'm not known for greening up. Uh, but today I'm going to do a little greening up because I want this to be really showy fullness. And I feel like I need the green to really make this, this side pop. I'm going to be putting a lot of this delphinium around the entire piece. And if I don't use the green, I fear that it's just going to blend in. Oh, this is going to be so pretty. So what I'm using here, I'm using a series of greens. This green is crepe myrtle. And then we've got this really cool aliagnus, which is nice because it's got this this gray green leaf. It's a little bit of unexpected color to it. All right, sometimes when I have debris and leaves and I don't like to make the ground messy, they end up in my pockets. I go home at the end of the day and who knows what's in those pockets. All right, so I know I'm gonna want this. It's got some really neat movement here. I'm just trying to figure out where I want this focus to be. 
Look at that. Using a variety of greens is really uh, one of those techniques that when I do use greenery, I find to be most helpful. It, it just, oh, I'm not thinking. It changes the way you see the arrangement. If you've used all lemon leaf or even all crepe myrtle, it just looks like a whole lot of the same thing. I like using a variety. Again, I'm just greening to give myself some shape there. I have this. This is actually left over from another design. It's already got flowers attached to it. And this is something I often do. If I am if I am going from the ceremony to the reception doing a flip, you'll see I rework designs all the time. I try not to sell flips because if things get, go wrong or or things something happens then I feel a lot of stress with a flip, so I try to never sell a flip. Uh, I do sometimes, but those of you who don't know what a flip is, uh, Jordan, can I have the bind wire, please? Can you actually cut me a few pieces of the bind wire? Yeah. Uh, if you could cut me like five, six inch, that'd be great. Those of you who don't know what a flip is, a flip is when you design the ceremony, you stay till the end of the ceremony and flip it into the reception. Uh, I try to sell double the arrangements, which oftentimes, if we're using the same arrangements of ceremony as the reception, oftentimes it actually can be cheaper to actually just have the extra arrangements than to do the flip itself. Thank you. And that is not because I'm trying to get more money out of my client. It is because it is a much more productive way to work than to be worried about whether you're going to run out of time while the guests are there watching, because that is a bad look on your business. Alright, actually it worked during this one. Sometimes when you're working, you're kind of guessing. Uh, <laughs> I hate to say that I guess, but a lot of times we're artists, we're designers, right? And we have to make our best judgments and our best guesses. So I want this to just follow all the way up the top of the crown of this chair. Pull this one here. And I'm just twisting this on with bind wire. Uh, I don't use water source for this type of thing. This is going to be at, on the chair for the reception. Uh, or you could even do something like this if you're designing for a mondop. Uh, I love doing mondop designs. Uh, for those of you who don't know, mondop designs are usually designed for Indian weddings. However, I have designed them for non-Indian weddings when clients just really like that aesthetic. So right now I'm looking at this Ellie Agnes and I think it's my last piece, which makes me a little sad because I'd like that one to go all the way around the chair, but I've decided that's not happening anymore. So, all right, I'm gonna take my bind wire, even though I'm sad, I'm gonna to commit to this. I'm gonna bind wire these two pieces of Ellie Agnes together uh, and I'm going to attach them right to the chair with my bind wire. I am using gold today. Now you can get this bind wire in lots of different colors. I actually would try to get it in hot pink if I was doing it for this chair. Uh, gold stands out, so I want you to be able to see what I'm doing. Uh, but hot pink would be great if this was going to a real party. Oh gosh, this is so pretty. Now this is Nandina Bloom. Uh, this comes from my garden. And it's got this great little pod that opens up these little tiny yellow flowers. But the yellow flower itself is not super impressive. Sorry, Nandina. The, uh, the white pod before it actual, actually blossoms is my favorite part of this. Go. If you want to plant something in your yard that is kind of really helpful and will give, give, give all year long, it is Nandina. It gives you these fun little blossomy pods in the summer. It gives you greenery from the spring all the way to uh, the winter. And then even the early winter, it changes color throughout the year. And in the winter, it gives you these red berries just in time for Christmas. 
Uh, I don't think they're edible though, so be careful about that. Uh, not 100% sure on the edit, on the whether it's not edible or not, but I wouldn't take the risk. Let's see, let's put a couple more of these here, and then I'm gonna add a couple more greens, and then we're gonna be ready to really blow this out with our gorgeous delphinium. It's nice to be able to step back and look at your design, make sure you feel comfortable with the direction you've gone. Oh, this one's got this great leaf attached to it and I felt like I needed some length which that is perfect I love when I just find the right piece it just happens upon all right what else do I have in here these these are these great sword ferns I'm gonna add some of these again it's just changing the texture and you see how those that variety of greens are just really interesting it's different I only have a few of these, but they're really working well. Very, very happy with this. I do want to make sure I don't create straight lines in the middle of soft lines. So this one I'm actually just going to cut down. When I cut it down, I'm going to remove the lower greens so that I don't have any greens going into my foam. Give myself a little bit of edge there. I hate to cut these down. I feel like I'm wasting, but I also don't want to 